Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy. We're here with Phoebe Bridges and Connor Burst of... Better um, Oblivion. Better, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go. I wasn't sure what band we were talking about. Better Oblivion <laughs> Community Center. That's our band. Who have just dropped a surprise new record today. How does it feel to have it out in the world? Fantastic, I would say. <laughs> um, thank God. What made you decide to do it as a surprise and keep it a secret? Um, I really wanted to because... Even before we started the band, I feel like I had a idea of what our hypothetical band would sound like. I feel like it kind of doesn't sound like that. So I wanted to make sure that people didn't think it was going to sound a certain way yeah. or like duetty. Yeah. I, I feel like we stayed pretty true to like it being a, its own band and we sing most of the parts together and yeah. Yeah, when the, <clears throat> I feel like when records are coming out and you hear just one song off of it, you can kind of like. A lot of people get lazy and just like fill in the blanks like, oh, this is what it's going to all be like or, you know, form their own misconceptions. So it's kind of fun to just have everyone hear all the music at once and yeah. get like the full, full album experience. Because it's a very eclectic record. Were you, were you worried about people thinking it might be some kind of fireside acoustic? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wonderwall covers the whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what can you tell us about... So I understand you guys played shows together and obviously you've appeared on tracks together before, but um, when did it kind of make sense that you two should make an album together? We, it was pretty gradual. We have a joke that the record size kept getting bigger, where we like mm -hmm. wrote a song together and it was fun. And we we're like, oh, it kind of doesn't immediately fit into one of our styles. So it was kind of its own thing already. We we're like, maybe we should put out a seven inch or something. And then we kept writing like songs, a, and we were like, ah. Oh. Ten, ten inches are cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, then it ended up just being a full, full record. So here's the annoying question you're going to get asked for the next year. Band name. Tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think that <clears throat> I like the, the sound of the words together, and I think it has a little air of uh, mystery to it, which I think is disappearing from the world, so it's good to have some... Mystery, and I don't know. I kind of like you kind of messed with me too. You're like, yeah, we really need to come up with a band name, and then like the next day, you called me and we're like, I got it. <laughs> Better Oblivion Community Center. I was like, what? That was just in your brain. Yeah, I think if it's, <laughs> to me, it's kind of like impending doom mixed with like, you know, the positivity of, you know, a community center. Like yeah. we're all in this together. So, kind of the duality of that. I'm imagining merch with like, you know, those metal logos where you can't really read it. <laughs> I already have yeah, that merch. She's, she's already got that. Yeah, <laughs> illegible <laughs> metal merch. Yeah. yeah, I've not seen the artwork yet because it's all a surprise. But I'm assuming like doom, gloom and hatred. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. quite. It kind of looks like a, almost like a sci-fi book or something to me, which is cool. Yeah, the photo is actually this, in LA, <clears throat> there's this house that, um, there's a tree in the in the yard and they have hung all these chandeliers like kind of hundreds of chandeliers and there's a little um parking meter in front of the house so if you like it you can go and fill the parking meter and like helps pay their power bill but i think they oh, weirdly got in trouble recently yeah. or something because they turned it off and we tried to get an actual photo of it because i had a picture on my phone and we tried to get a real photo of it on someone's camera and we ended up having to use the phone Photo. Yeah, they, they have like like all good things. It got shut down. Yeah. you know, it's like the neighbors complained because it was too bright or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what can you tell us about um, the process? I mean, did you guys arrive with songs in your head for this, or was it purely collaborative from the start? It was like top to bottom. Pretty yeah. much every song was had the idea of like this band after the first one. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I had like little guitar parts and stuff that I brought for us to finish, but it but it wasn't so much like trading songs back and forth or anything. Yeah, we didn't do any like sending demos over email or anything like that. It was definitely like sitting with guitars and, you know, of course someone would have one like kind of seed to start the song with, like a progression or a little melody or whatever. But yeah, we, it was very um, collaborative the whole, whole time. Did you just kind of sit down and see what saw what came out, or were there conversations about what you didn't want it to be? We had mostly conversations yeah. about what we didn't want it to be. I actually feel like pretty much none of the songs we 
hypothesized about first. We weren't like, hey, we want to write about this, or like we do just would start writing and themes would kind of emerge, but we definitely talked a lot about. Yeah, not wanting it to be like, yeah, like duet, folky duet stuff, you know, and, um, you know, having some kind of rock band element to it. And I think, I mean, there's some songs on the record where we trade verses, but I would say like 80% of the time we're like singing together the whole time and like a lot of like unison. So yeah, kind of, I think I like, I like bands like that where you have like two singers that are pretty much singing the whole time and they, the, the combination of the two voices almost, you know, kind of make one voice that you think of when you think of the band, you know? So I, I don't know. So is it so fused together that you think like in years to come there's going to be Lennon versus McCartney style debates about who wrote, who wrote what? I, well, expect, I, I expect so. so. I expect it, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we were doing an interview at some point and someone asked about a specific line and I truly couldn't remember. I was like, I don't know. Yeah, for like, sure. Because there was a lot of like going back or just like, you know, editing one line or changing one word, so yeah. And we did Lennon McCartney it with the... Uh, like we just were like how we 50-50 all the songs. Yeah. Oh yeah, as far as like, if you want to get inside baseball with it, all the publishing Yeah, but that's what they do. <laughs> they do, they do Lennon McCartney even, no matter what. Is it always 50-50 with Lennon? yeah. Really? Even when it's like that's clearly. A, that's true? Even that, when, yeah. Even when it's clearly a, new, a Paul song or clearly a, a Lennon Beatles song. That's Beatles trivia for me, I didn't know. Yeah. So it's gonna be scholars being like, that's a Bridgerism. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of want to take like all the credit for songs. Like, for example, there is one song where I had the idea for it, like the, the kind of, I was, the Chesapeake song on the record. I was like, I really want to write a song about how depressing music is and was talking about it for kind of a long time. And then Connor like completely stole the idea, not stole it, but like he, he took over and like wrote all the best lines and I talked about it for way too long without actually doing any work. But I always joke about being like, oh man, I remember when I wrote that <laughs> part. <laughs> Is that, so what can you kind of tell us about the, the themes and the character of the record? I think we are kind of like figuring it out and for the most part figured it out yeah. like after the songs. We, were yeah. written. Just, what did Mitski just tweet about the process? Oh yeah, that was so the awesome. answer would like, if if people were honest, their response would be, "I have no fucking idea." Yeah. We talk, <laughs> we and we talk about this a lot, which is, I feel like every time I finish a song, I'm like, "Oh man, used up all my powers. So I'm never gonna do that again." And that's what right. she said on yeah. Twitter was like, yeah. half the time when someone's asking you, you're replying with a lie, and the truth is like, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. So there's going to be yeah. some people being like, oh, that dying refugee song, this must be a Trump record. And exactly. Like, you're, you're just a living human being. Yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. I watch the news sometimes, yeah. 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 And I think, like, you're kind of constantly absorbing things in your life, like experiences and stuff you read or see or whatever. And I don't know, I always felt like those things kind of go into your subconscious and then there's, like, a delayed effect when it comes back out like in a song, you know? So it's like, you can have like an experience and then it doesn't really like manifest itself in like creatively for like a couple of years, you know? And that's, I don't know, that to me, I've always thought that was cool about um, songwriting is that it can, these things that like you don't even, you didn't even necessarily know where they're coming from, but then once the song's done, you're like, oh yeah, I think that's, that was like living in the bottom, the basement of my brain for like, a long time, some little idea. Ah, as we said, this is a very um, live and diverse record. So now we get on to the guests. Okay. Nick Zinner from the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. Yeah. Carla Azar, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From Audio Lux. Uh, the rhythm section of Doors, you've got members of Goldsmiths, members of your own bands. I mean, what makes, how do you decide on who's going to appear on a record like this? <laughs> it was kind of like, who was closest in yeah. town. Um, we recorded it just um, at this house in LA and uh, kind of... I feel like it was just people we agreed were great. Yeah. To, like, I think we have a similar social circle as far as LA goes, so yeah. he toured with Dawes before. I've known those guys for a while. Um, I've known Carla since I was a kid, which was really cool. She like showed me Elliot Smith for the first time. 
Um, and then she'd played with Connor. Uh, my friend Anna Butters, who toured with me all last year, she played on the record. Yeah. Um, Nick was Connor's Nick's friend. Been my friend for ever. Yeah. He's actually 274 years old. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nick Zinner's actual age. Yeah. Well, he's famously a vampire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Forever 17. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's definitely a very special thing about living in LA to me is just, you know, y you get to be like, ah, oh, who's around today? Which must be cool to give it kind of like a, a garage band kind of feel, just like come yeah. over. Totally. Yeah. And it was, yeah, at Connor's house, which was also really fun. And Yeah, he, the studio is, well, it's, it's my house, but it's this guy, Jonathan Wilson's like gear and studio. So it, it's kind of, I always like <clears throat> recording in, places that aren't actual studios, you know? Like, mm -hmm. the, there's something nice about being in a, just a house, you know? Because it's less, less sterile, like, feeling. So, yeah, it's cool. And have you had chats about the, the set list? Is it going to be purely focused on the album, or will you be playing each other's songs too? I think we're going to try to have well, fun with it, but <clears throat> we're not quite sure what yet. Yeah, the, the, uh, the record's only, like, what, 40-some minutes? so. We, in order to like do a headlining set, we're gonna have to come up with some more material. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, we, I don't know. I think covers and maybe doing some, like a couple like reworkings of some of our songs. Or because you guys did that Julian Welch cover, right? Everything is yeah. free now. Yeah. Beautiful song. Yeah. How do you guys agree on a cover? Well, That's you a... showed me that song, which has now become one of my favorites, and I play it all the time without you. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. I think. Well, we cover the last song on the record, Dominoes, as a cover. Um, I think that we just share a lot of the same taste, like a lot of what we gravitate, toward, uh, gravitate towards is the same, so I think it'll be pretty easy. Yeah. Like, I think every time we've done a cover, it's been But if you got obvious. any ideas, if you got any ideas, we're, yeah. we're all yeah. ears. Well, the last time we spoke, you said you wanted to cover Table for Glasses by Jimmy Eat World. Oh, dude. Now with a full... I love that song. <laughs> I love that song so much. Yeah. I do. I kind of have a fantasy at some point in my life to do a covers album yeah. of like what are classics to me, but you know, pretty eclectic, like pop punk world to like actual folk world, and yeah. I think it'd be fun. So post tour, do you foresee yourselves making more material together? I would love to do that. I don't know. What are you talking about? Can we, can we just make an agreement? Right yeah, now? let's do it. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You're seeing it, it here live. Yeah. <laughs> We should, have, we should have spit in our hand first. You. <laughs> and this record aside, what are you guys planning for? Are you going to make another um, Boy Genius record? Is there another solo album on the way? Or? It's, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely would love to do both of those things. Uh, I feel lucky to have options on what order to put things in, but yeah, for sure. So you, Connor? Yeah, <clears throat> I want to make more records <laughs> <laughs> of all... Shapes and sizes, yeah. Ten um, inch? Yeah, all, only 10 inches from here on out. <laughs> and I don't know, is there like a, a record in your mind that you guys are itching to make, something you haven't covered yet that you think? Phoebe had a good idea for, I have a tendency to like, you know, if I'm like hanging out, you know, staying up late, hanging out with people, I tend to like want to start bands with like all my Every single Friends, person I that meet, he comes in contact with. You know, I'll be like, Which is why I yeah. thought our band was fake for a minute. I'll be like, yeah, we got to start a band. So she had an idea of like, actually go back, find all those people. Yeah. I started, you know, I, I had the idea to start bands with late night and then actually like make a song with each of them. Like, so do one song of each fake band that you started. And 80% of the people I make this joke to are like, oh, he said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a band, actually. I'd have a song on that record. Yeah, it would, it would be very eclectic, for sure. Yeah. You should write that down before Dave Grohl turns into a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, totally. Dave Grohl of documentary fame. <laughs> if you're listening, Dave, we should start a <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. thanks a lot, man. Thanks, guys. Absolutely.